Welcome to the show. Happy Saturday morning. I hope everybody is doing wonderful. How are you doing today? I got to tell you what, I am so happy to be here. This is a neat day because, well, we launched our podcast this week. There's, there's a link up at the top of the chat. We launched our podcast. It's really pretty cool. I have gotten nothing but great feedback about it. So I did want to start off telling you all about it. If you've never been here before, welcome to the channel. We talk plumbing. We talk about getting into the trades, becoming the best tradesman, starting your own business, and using social media to grow your business. Now, today we're talking about using your trade skills to take you to the next level. How do you move up and become a better tradesman? Why is that important? It was really neat because this morning we came in shot. Here, here's what we're doing on Saturdays now, just so you know. We, we came in this morning, shot a podcast episode with Randy. Uh, Y'all know him as Henry or Squirt. Uh, shot an episode with him because he got in the union, became a pipe fitter, uh, worked with a bunch of welders, did a bunch of cool stuff. So brought him in, interviewed him, took him back into the shop where we talked about Leak Pro and everything that we're doing with it. It's great because Randy's the one who's putting that together. Uh, he assembles the units, the cases, ships it out, runs the training on it. I get to go out and help, so I enjoy that. Uh, but man, we are having fun. I hope everybody's doing wonderful. If you're new to the channel and you were searching something specific, you may want to jump back over to the channel and just check it out and look for what you're looking for. But if this was served up to you, I recommend hanging out. We've got some great people in here. Sean Strong is in here. I see already. Uh, Henry Wakefield, Colton, my moderators, my, my people that run everything and make everything happen. Check it out. I'm going to jump into the comments real quick. As you see, there is a link pinned to the top. That is the link to the new YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed yet, man, please go up there, click on that, go over there, subscribe. You're going to enjoy something. It's a lot different than what we're doing here. We're bringing in tradespeople from all around the world, interviewing them, asking them about getting into the trade, how to become the best, how to start a business and things they had to learn. If you want to grow in the trades, it's a great place to be. And there's a comment right there from me. There's the link. Go check it out. Uh, I hope that that works for you. Uh, I hadn't even checked on the link just to see if it'll work, but it does take you over there. So it is, it's pretty cool. I love seeing that. Uh, let me jump into the comments real quick. First one is Red Cox. How are you doing? Working to the bone. Good to see you in here this morning. A channel member. Great to have you here as always. Dalax Tox. Hello to you. Crazy. Roblox Player 2008. Buddy, how are you doing? Good to see you in here. The one, the only, the great Mr. Sean Strong. What is up? Or that, that would be Sean G. Strong right there. And here's my brother from another mother, Sean Strong. How is everybody doing? And what do you mean it's about time? Come on, man. We, I watched my countdown. As soon as it said show time, I hit start and gave it 10 seconds on the show. We'll begin soon. Hit my video. We are rocking and rolling. There's the link to the Discord group. Want to say a, a special shout out, and, and he's probably not even in here yet. Uh, who, who was it? Dilly? Uh, and I got a great message from Sean the other day. Matter of fact, I'm just I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up. I can't show it to you that they've they've taken away my my privileges there to do stuff like that. Uh, I used to be able to pull up stuff on my phone. But let's see, Lord Dilly made a comment that says, says, look, uh, where'd it go? There we go. Been listening to the Trade Talks podcast, and I got to say, what an amazing experience. I absolutely love it. Please keep them going. So much good information. Great work, everyone involved. Oh, oh okay. I don't know what fell in the trash, but we'll find it. Perfect. So I, I, I want to show you all this just so you know, I'm really not BSing here. Uh, Sean, thank you for sharing that with me uh, the other day. Uh, I love that. 
And I think I can take leave that one out anyway, because I don't think we have a hallway camera anymore. So I should be able to pull this up like this. And just want to see if I go to that camera. Looky there. See, now y'all can see it. I thought this was so cool. Lord Dilly, if you're in here, fantastic. If not, I will make sure Sean sees this and, and, and send you a link and reply. We're talking about it. Been listening to Trade Talks podcast. Got to say, what an amazing experience. Absolutely love it. Please keep them going. So much good information. Great work, everyone involved. So, look, man, we love what we get to do. Y'all know that. Uh, it's nothing new to y'all, but we are having a blast. Now, there's the link to the subreddit right there. We get a lot of great material off the subreddit. So, I, I want to say thanks to all y'all that put up pictures, videos, stuff like that. We have fun doing everything we get to do. All right. So, now, Sean G. Strong put the same things up. There's the link to the Discord and the subreddit. Thank you for doing everything you do. Mike Grimaldi. Hey, Roger, roughing in a half bath right now, stumped. Best way to vent. I'm a handyman remodeling our kitchen residence. Mike, what I would tell you is take some pictures, put them over in the subreddit group, or go to the Discord group, ask for help over there. Uh, man, I got a lot of good people that get in there and give you some great ideas. Crazy Robux Players 8 2008 says, you're so influential to the next tradesman. You have such an impact on the green horns. I love it. Uh, we all thank you so much. So Crazy Roblox Player, let me tell you what. I, I love what I get to do. Uh, we, we, we talk about learning. We talk about positivity. We talk about being optimistic, recruiting. We talk about how plumbers protect the health of the nation. And we talk about love of the trades. And I keep that written up there because I don't ever want to forget one little thing of them. But guys, this is what this is all about. Uh, Chris Shreves, how are you doing? Good to see you in here as always. Gandalf says, found you through home renovation. Happy Saturday. I'll tell you what, a week ago Tuesday being on there with Jeff. Gun, I got to tell you, I, I, I love Jeff. Love what he's doing. It was great. Him and I ran into each other in Vegas. And, and it's funny because I'm sitting here talking to a, a sponsor. And all of a sudden, it just, somebody keeps bumping me. And I'm talking like the vice president of this company. And I turn and look like, like, dude. And I turn and look back. I'm like, wait, that's Jeff. He's like, what are you doing? So it was so funny. It was great to get to see him there. Uh, Jeff, if y'all don't know, uh, look, Home Reno TV uh, is amazing. He's got almost 3 million subs now. If you have not seen him, go over there, subscribe to his channel. Great stuff. I love it. I love watching what he does. And, and you know, he, he put it, what, what was it? Handyman versus expert. I got to tell you, guys, he's an expert. Don't let anybody fool you. David Jace is about to take the plumbing state test. I had a hard time with sizing the DWV system. Any suggestions? Yeah, if you don't have the UPC study guide, even the IPC what do they call it, the, the study guide or companion. Uh, man, some phenomenal books. I'm working on a, I'm working on a lot of things, but I'll tell you what I'm working on. I'm working on an app. I'm going to build an app where, number one, you can watch special videos made just for people in the app. But I think that we're going to put together a training for plumbers in there. Meaning, you're getting ready to go take a test. This is what you need. It's going to be UPC. It's going to be IPC. You can break it down. What, what do you all think about that? Uh, if you like that idea, give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart. Give me a heck yeah. Give me whatever you want to do in the comment. Just let me see. Do you all think that's a good idea? Because we're working on some cool, cool stuff. Liam Warg says, after a decade of military service, I reached out to a local electrical company, and they offered me an entry-level position the next day. And? Bought a complete tool set. The trades is phenomenal. I got to tell you, Liam, I, I tell people this all the time. If you can't get a job in the trades right now, you're really not trying very hard. I don't want to fix that camera. That's going to bug me. I'm going to tweak that over just a hair. Uh, I'm just trying to get closer where y'all can see me good. Uh, here, here's my thing. 
People say people can't find work. People ain't looking for work. Uh, now, Liam, I tell you what, I did give you preferential treatment because of, of your military service. So, first of all, thank you for your service. But fix it again. I see I went a little too far. Perfect. Like it. So, I did giving you a little bit of preferential treatment. Uh, I think people that are in the service and serve, they have a discipline level already built in. At least they better have. Uh, that, that makes it fantastic. Billy Plumman, what is happening? How are you? Good to see you in here. Look, you know, Liam, anybody can find a job right now if they'll get out and look for it. We've put together training. Uh, man, getting into the trade, getting into the trades right now is phenomenal. Call it Rich with Roger. Because getting in the trades and doing things right can make you rich if you want to be. But you've got to figure that out. And that was great talking to Randy this morning in the podcast because that's what it's all about. Look, if you want to be the very best, it's easy to do right now. Not many other people are trying. And working to the bone, I see that $1 super chat thing. Thank you very much. I will get down there to it in a minute and pull it up. Sean Strong, thank you very much. Speaking of thumbs up, everyone should leave one on the video. Yeah, let, let YouTube know if, if y'all like what we're doing. If you like it, give us a thumbs up uh, and, and let us know what's happening there. I want to look in the banners. Did, did we do a banner to subscribe to the new channel or anything? Okay, I don't think that we did. I'm just going to go ahead and let that run. Uh, back up into the comments. Uh, Let's see right here. Working to the bone says relax, not by. No, not by is all over it. That's okay. We know what's going on. Yes. Okay. This is a banner. Oh, there it is right there. Check it out. I'm going to leave that up. Thank you, Colton, very much for everything you do around here. Uh, Sean Strong says the real not bot. There you go. Or for real. Yeah, Sean's the real not bot. Sean is the one that will kick you out of here. He's tough. Mike says, thanks, Roger, for the advice. You are welcome, sir. I hope that helps. Uh, Sean Strong, who's in here, look, man, he sees everything that happens in the Discord and in the subreddit. So, and I've got other people in there too. So I get in there when I can. I've just, with everything we're doing, I want y'all to know, I literally, I have got a list of about, I think I figured the other day, it's about 280 videos. There's 56. There's 56. There's 56. The one I just finished had 64. So what's that? 215, something like that. 220. And then I've got another one here somewhere that I can't find right now that has another 68. So, I mean, we've got about... 300 videos that we're shooting for the courses that we're putting together right now. Our app is going to be amazing. I just want to tell y'all, we're just getting started working on it, but and everybody in the office is stoked with what we're doing. There you go. Sean is the man. Dilly Plumman says, the Trade Talks podcast has been my new favorite thing. Keep it up. Great job, everyone involved. I love it. So there is Lord Dilly himself. Thank you very much. Sean Strong, absolutely. Working to the bone says, on vacation, no underfloors. Yeah, no underfloors for a few days. Good for you. I like that. Hey, when you're on vacation and you're working on your own place, it's not a bad thing. Jim says, also, it was this channel that made me choose the trades. Look, I talk about transitioning from the trades to, I'm sorry, from the military to the trades. I would love to see more people do it. I think the quality of plumbing companies in the future rises because of the better tradesmen that we'll be getting in. But also, look, people getting into the trades right now, this is the next entrepreneurials coming up, the next entrepreneurs coming up. If you're entrepreneurial minded and you're getting in right now, y'all are gonna realize there's gonna be a lot of plumbing companies in the next five to 10 years that are shutting down, that are closing, that are being sold. These big venture capitalist groups are buying up all these companies that are doing good. 
So they're all going to be one big organization. All these little mom and pop companies that y'all can, y'all can start up are going to grow and be phenomenal. Keep going. And I tell you what, Mike, the, the idea that we've got, I, I wish I could tell y'all more about it right now, but in the next couple of months, we're going to have things ready to roll. We have been in here shooting videos like crazy. I just got to tell you, I, I've already got, out of those that I just showed you, I've already got about 120 videos shot out of the 280. So we've got a ways to go, but we're working on it. Uh, let me see, let me see. I like the night bot. Check that out. Want more information about what I'm about? There you go. I kind of dig that. Uh, working to the bone says, love this show. Thank you. Y'all are really going to love it a little bit. We're cooking fajitas today. Uh, I don't know why I've been craving fajitas, so I pulled them out the other day. Uh, and then, then, then I asked Randy yesterday. I said, hey, why don't you come in the morning and let me interview you? Because I didn't have anybody lined up. So he said, you know what? That'd be fun. I'll do that. So pretty neat. So pulled them out. Randy brought them in this morning. Uh, I don't know. He went to Central Market, though. I guess he had to go get sour cream and guacamole and all that good stuff. Uh, David J says, we need a video on sizing and drawing a three and 10 story building. That's the biggest part of the state test. Okay, David, which test? And I'm just asking, oh, I've already had it highlighted. Uh, which test? I'm, I'm going to have to look at that because, or send me any information if you've got like a picture of the, the drawing of the building or anything like that. And it's just, it's all counting fixture units. It, it's, it's, that's what it's all about. Working to the bone. Thank you very much. Like I said, I do appreciate that. Plumber Stacker says, what's up, everyone? Yeah, if, if you got questions you want to guarantee gets answered, uh, you know, we're, we're not doing the Google Doc anymore. Uh, look, working to the bone, you, you hit it right there. Put a super chat. Do something in. Put your question in there. Uh, I see every one of those. Here in a minute, I'm going to skip over questions. Colton will come over here. Take controls of the mothership right here where we're at. Talking about the mothership and where we're at. Man, I should have all things together. We're trying to buy a new training center, a new property outside of town, 10 acres. We're going to build a training center for slab leaks and leak detection. And that's what's cool about having Randy on because he's the one who builds all that equipment and does a lot of the training. So I'm excited about this. Right now, it's got a, I'm going to call this right, five, six, seven, about a seven-bedroom house on it that needs some work. So we're going to turn open walls, work on plumbing. I've talked to my buddy, Dustin Stelzer, the electrician. Dustin Stelzer, that's another one. If you have not checked out Electrician You, go check it out. Between Jeff, Dustin, and myself, I got to tell you guys, we're, we're doing some cool stuff on YouTube. Plumber Stacker, what is up with you? Sergio says, I've been learning tons from your videos. I'm currently in an apprenticeship program, and I'm loving it. Plumber Stacker, or Sergio, where, where's the apprentice program that you're in? And this is also, Plumber Stacker, this has been a while since I caught a live stream. I love having y'all in here, man. Uh, Chris Shreves says, have, have you ever partnered with a hydrogen? I haven't yet. Uh, there's a couple that I've talked to. I have not found the one that I'm just head over heels in love with yet. Uh, but I will work on it and make it happen. Shelby Shivers says, uh, S.O. Moxie Plumbing Contractors out of Lufkin, Texas, knocking out a Chick-fil-A store and Scooter's Coffee Shops across East Texas. Number one, love Chick-fil-A. Hadn't seen Scooter's yet, but Shelby, good to see you in here. I hope you are doing fantastic. There, Squirt. Henry says, good morning, crew. How are you doing? Uh, absolutely. Good to see him. Ready for some fajitas. See, yesterday was Cinco de Mayo. That's kind of what made me think of fajitas. Uh, I may have partaken in a little tequila last night. Not for sure. 
Absolutely. Squirt is in the house. Max says, Roger, love all your videos. Such great content and super entertaining. Ha ha ha. Whoever handles editing is awesome too. Mike, are you related to Colton? I think he pays people to get in here and say stuff like that. Doug Milton says, I'm going to treat plumbing like an obsession for the next decade. Hopefully, I'll be great as time goes on. D Doug, I'll tell you what, and, and I talk about this all the time. If you'll get up every morning for 30 minutes to an hour and study the trade, and what I mean by study the trade is it can be a code book. It can be stuff like that. But what I really recommend is the, the plumber magazines, the contractor magazines. There's new tools, materials, technique, and equipment coming out every day in all the trades. What I recommend is getting up 30 minutes to an hour every day and just look through those. Read them. Read the articles. Don't just look at the pictures. Read the articles. Find out what news coming out. That's going to help you understand less about plumbing. And if you do this for a year, you will be in the top 5% of the industry. If you do this for two to five years, you're going to own the industry because you're going to know everything new coming out that other plumbers aren't even seeing yet. Peter Futsalar says, thank you for shedding a, shining a light on us plumbers. Greetings from the Netherlands. Brother, good to have you in here. If you're not subscribed, please do so. And look up at the top of the comments. There's a link up there to our other YouTube channel that we literally just started four days ago, five days ago. Uh, guys, this is going to be cool because we're talking to some amazing people all across the country. Phil says, what do you think of NCCER? Uh, plumbing programs for new people coming into the trades. I I've looked through the program because, you know, one of the high schools here, teaches NCCER for plumbing and HVAC. I, I think it's okay, but I, I think that I like what Texas is doing right now. Believe it or not, I think they may have even incorporated some Nessar into it. Here's the thing. You need plumbers involved. You need people hands-on touching stuff, working with stuff. I like the program, what Texas is doing in their high schools right now. Sophomore, junior, senior year, if you take plumbing and you go through this curriculum that they've got set up, guess what? You can take your tradesman exam when you graduate high school. Guys, a tradesman in Texas starts out at about $52,000 a year. Not a bad gig. We need to get more training programs for people coming into the trades. I think it, I think it speeds up the process. Sean Strong says, it's easy to be a beacon when the light bounces off your head. Whoa, whoa, man, Sean. We, we've been trying to work on this light, too, to keep it off my head. David J says, taking the plumbing test in Cincinnati, Ohio, we have to size and draw a three- or ten-story building. They pick 50-question open book test and a practical test. Yo, I love that. Uh the UPC study guide has a great drawing for you to go through and size. And if you can go through and size that drawing, how many floors is it on, rebuild it, then look at all your total fixed accounts. Man, it's having that chart, which I'm assuming they let you use the chart. Having that and going through it makes all the difference in the world. And like I said, we're building an app, so the, the, the written part, we're building an app that will literally cover pretty much anything and everything they could ask you, so we're excited about it. Dilly Plumbing, thank you very much. Much respect. Sergio says, the apprenticeship program is in Tampa, Florida at roto Rooter, currently being trained by a master plumber. Sergio, I like that. Look, I, th I think, I think roto Rooter does a lot of good things. Their recruitment is great because they do bring a lot of people into the trade. Uh, look, I'm, I love it. I'm, like I said, we're building a training center here in Dallas because we want to do the same type stuff. Anyone here ever hired as an electrician apprentice with Gaylor Electric? Number one, never heard of Gaylor Electric. Uh, this is probably mostly plumbers in here, but there may there are some electricians I do know. 
Doug Melton says, say left effort, say less effort goes a long way in the life plan to bring that to my future career in plumbing. Got to make myself useful in society. Doug, I love that. Uh, you know, and, and Sean, I'll tell you what, plumbers are the, the superheroes of the trades. We go in, we, we save people, we rescue people, we protect the health of the nation. Hey guys, I'm getting ready to move whenever y'all are ready. Plumber Stacker says, Roger, is better to start, Roger, is it better to start an AC division without experience or hire someone to manage it or partner with someone who knows it? You know, my thing is, if you're already a plumbing company, can you afford to buy a smaller HVAC company? Randy, if you want to put that out on the, the desk, that's fine, on the, the bench. Uh, Roger, is it better to start? I would, it, my thought is, I would want to hire a company or, or buy a company that already does some. Can you find one that's small, that has a great reputation? Maybe somebody that you can bring in to run it and be a manager. Uh, you're going to learn as you grow, but that's kind of helping you get a head start because it's already an established company. You've already got customers, you've already got business, and now you can introduce them to your plumbing company. That's what happened, you know, Rescue Air bought me out. Texas Green Plumbing brought me in because I understood plumbing, new plumbing. I brought plumbing and customers to the table already. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's not cheap to buy a company, but depending on how big your company is, it, it may be easy to write a check for you know, a million, two million dollars. Uh, if not, maybe you bring somebody in and say, look, you're going to retain part ownership, which is how I was brought in. I retain part ownership, but I also got a, a good cash buyout too. Doug Milton says, I need to get out of communist Canada and come to Texas. You're speaking my language. Doug, dude, you, you come down here, you will have it made. I, I tell people, number, number one, it's Canada. It's cold. Why do y'all live there? I don't get it. Uh, I like Texas. I mean, it's probably, oh, here, I'll tell you right now. It, if I'm guessing, is 75. Oh, it's already 81 degrees right now. Uh, oh, 83 in Richardson. So here's my deal. I don't know how cold it is there right now. I'm sure it's not super cold. It's summertime. Man, y'all get really cold. We don't. So I love it down here. Sean Strong says, I will tell you, plumbers, don't forget don't forget your case when you leave for work in the morning. No doubt. We do. Man, we protect the health of the nation. We take care of our people. Plumber Stacker says, not a bad idea. All right. I'm going to stop on that right there. I am going to grab my phone. <clears throat> I'm going to grab my iced tea for now. But this is Sipping Saturday, and we are having fajitas. Now, normally I do margaritas, but today I think I want to sip some bourbon. Uh, we're going to go out there and talk to Squirt. I'm going to go ahead and turn his microphone up so he's live now. Uh, I'm going to go to the shop entry camera. I'll see you all out there in just a moment. Are you ready? Good to go. All right, all right, all right. Oh, I guess my battery was dead. They, they, they have my brick in here, keeping it going. So I gotta love it. I see we've already got this is ice, so we are ready. Uh, you know, I would normally go off the grill, but I mean, you're out here and you know how to do it. I normally have to. I can handle it. No, I'll go do it. I think. <laughs> why don't you open the safe? The safe's open. You open a safe. Let's go ahead and, and, and I don't know. There's a lot of choices here. Do, do, do you want regular Jack Daniels? Uh, and, and we'll get in here so we can get focused where y'all want. We look pretty. Uh, and it may be the ISO because we, we, we've got the door open now. Uh, and y'all, you know, once we're out here, I don't even know. Can, can we turn that camera towards us or do you? Okay. I mean, it's, it's up to you. Uh, it gives you something to play with in there. Uh, and there goes Colton. Uh, Colton, come here and say hi to everybody. I mean, you're, you're here. You might as well jump in and say hello. But, well, hello. Awesome hello. Absolutely. <laughs> Great seeing you in here. Uh, so I'll step out here and start this. 
Uh, you get in there and find us some bourbon. Uh, and we, we've got, man, I love my glasses. I got some manly, manly glasses. Uh, Yeah, and today we get big cubes. So I'll let you get into the safe. I'm gonna go start this. That way we got fajitas ready and we'll get the fire. So Randy, tell them a little bit about you and what you do around here now. So I'm Squirt. Uh, I've been working here about six, seven months now. I was originally brought in to do Leak Pro. So I've started doing that, learned all that. I know how to build the equipment, train people to use the equipment. Now, I help do video set, come up with content, create things. Try to keep him in line, which <laughs> nobody can do. Nobody can do that. Why would anybody want to keep me in line? Well, some of us need some things for, out of you. I, I have... I have so much fun doing what I do. <laughs> Why would anybody want to keep me in line? All right. Let me see. Where was I? David J. Here we go. Does Texas recognize other states' license? I'm considering a move to Texas and want to know if my license would still be valid. David, this is really good because I've, I've got a friend that I'm talking to about the same thing. And yes, it does recognize other states' license depending on, it's just the quality of the test. And I hate to say that, Texas is one of the hardest places to get your plumbing license. The cool thing about it though, is that they do have reciprocity with other states. But if, if your state is just a state that really you, you get your license out of a Cracker Jack box, Texas doesn't really recognize that. So what they're doing is just contact the state. You, you, the cup the measuring cup over here all right so we got a cup right here uh texas does recognize other states we have reciprocity agreements right now with arkansas louisiana arkansas and louisiana i think they're working on oklahoma uh the cool thing about it is you know the the, the person my friend is god what california washington something like that Anyway, they, he sent his license down to Lisa Hill. She looked at it, uh, and, and they're, they're working on it. So what's he got to do? I'll tell you this. So that the very first thing you got to do is get registered as a plumbing apprentice. So get online, TSBPE. Go to TSBPE, Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners. If you'll just search that in Google, it'll help you find it. You want to go ahead and grab a bourbon for us today? Uh I like this, that we've got two big ice cubes. And I like this because they're a little square flat ones, but pretty nice. Uh, so this is pretty neat. But your license won't be valid. What you'll have to do is figure out, I'm not gonna, you know, normally I like about a four ounce pour, a four ounce pour. Today, you know what? I might as well. I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, I will let you. Yeah, that's probably more than I need. But, but you know, I'm going to sit up here and work for a little bit today. Uh, so it, you can get yourself however much you would prefer or how much you would like. I just won't measure. Just or don't measure. Uh, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, T.T. Ville says, got to keep the drinks protected in the safe. Look, I don't trust a lot of people right here. Just saying. And when, when you got a safe like that, why are you laughing? Uh, when, you got a, when you got a safe full of tequila and bourbon, uh, you know, sometimes it's a good idea to lock it up. Yeah. Just, although I did get a picture one day of Randy. I had left. And Randy's standing in front of the safe and it's open. And I'm like, man, I am in trouble. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do keep stuff locked up around here. <laughs> At least the important stuff. Matthew 2779 
says, Texas is not the hottest place to get a plumbing card. Massachusetts is one of the hardest in its plumbing and gas fitters license. Well, Texas is plumbing and gas too. Uh, we just don't call it a gas fitters license. <laughs> it's, man, when you're a licensed plumber in Texas, you do it all. We don't separate that no. out. Uh, and look, I'm not saying it's the hardest. I've been told this by lots of people. Matter of fact, I had a, a guy apply. He had a master license in like five or six states in central United States. He came down, kept talking to me, man, I'm getting my license, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Wanted to go into some kind of business with me where we work together in all these states. And he called me about three months later and said, dude, it took me forever to get my license. He said, that is the hardest freaking test I've ever done. Uh, so I, I'm going by what I'm told by other people. I'm not trying to upset anybody, Matthew, just telling you what I've been told. Uh, let me see. So Texas regulates plumbing license, just not firearms. Oh, we regulate firearms too. Yes, just, they do. We also have the right, well, the second amendment says we have the right to bear arms. Does your state not protect the amendment? That's right. I mean, if it's not a constitutional right they're allowing you to have, man, I'd be frustrated. And wasn't that signed in Massachusetts? I've been in the building where it was signed. That's, that's why I know that question, Matthew. Yep. Uh, so Jack Daniels, single barrel, barrel proof. Now, had I known this was barrel proof, I might not have gone for four ounces. Uh, but I love Jack Daniels, love single barrel. Got the fire going. Good day for fajitas. What do you mean fajitas? Fajitas, you know, just fajitas. fajitas. Okay. I mean, do, do y'all have fajitas where y'all are at? Matthew, you're, you're in Boston, so you might be, or Massachusetts, so you might be a good one. Uh, yeah, yeah, where are you at? Sean Strong is in Scott's Bluff, Nebraska. Uh, okay, so today we're talking about becoming a great tradesman. Take your skills to the next level. And talking to you with League Pro, how does League Detection Equipment help a plumbing company take their business to the next level? Well, like even whenever we were first starting at the beginning with the first plumbing company, we didn't know how to pinpoint leak detection. We had geophones and stuff and could get close. Now you said we, Tommy. Well, now, when, back when I was helping you, so. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't even know if we had geophones back then. <laughs> I think we just listened to the <laughs> to the the tree and let it tell us where it thought the leak was. Like, I can remember we did a job where we cut a hole in the kitchen floor, and then not too long later, we cut another one about eight foot away and actually fixed the leak. Because, you know, sound travels a little different under a slab. Mm -hmm. But to be able to... Locate the leak yourself and not have to call anybody else in on that project. Just about ensures it's your job all the way through the locating part and the repair itself. But if you've got to call in somebody else, then that could be an opportunity to lose that job because somebody else had to come into it. And that's why we started out learning that. Uh, friend of mine told me, he says, look, you know, be careful who you use for leak detection. A lot of these people will try to steal your customer. And then I thought, you know what? I just want to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. And invested in the best equipment I could find nationwide, uh, worldwide. I've got subsurface leak detection. I've got Leaktronics. I've got Leak Pro. I've got Geophones. <laughs> uh, and... I went to Florida for training. I went to California for training. Florida doesn't train anymore. California doesn't train in person. And my thought is, and we're not just building a training center to do leak pro. We're going to build a training center to do sewer line isolation and teach people how to flip test balls, isolate the sewer system. That way they can prove exactly where the leak is. Yeah. Every house doesn't need a whole repot. A lot of houses need you to tell them, hey, you've got a leak on this back bathroom in the corner. We can tunnel under from there, not bust a hole in your floor, not do this, not do this, fix the leak, and then we're good. So 
Now we're working on a lot of cool things that it does. It's going to separate your company or you as a plumber. Maybe you're a plumber. I mean, we're, we're talking about take your trade skills to the next level. What if you're a plumber and you're looking for a job with your current skills? Nothing bad. Yeah. You may be the best gum plumber in town. But what if you walked in for your next job interview and said, oh, by the way, I've got my own leak pro set. I know how to use it. I can do leak detection. And I've got my hoses, balls, pumps, compressors, yada, yada, yada. I can also do sewer line isolation, whole house sewer water or sewer water test. And you've got a whole business right here. Yes. And we grew Texas Green Plumbing on that business, literally doing things that a lot of other companies didn't do. So, man, it, it's really cool stuff. It's just something I, I think more people should look at and think about. Uh, wait, did I see Steve Arloa's in here? What the what? But I jumped in the other night and, and saw your live stream for just a second. Uh, I was walking into a meeting, got a notification, notification and clicked on it. I love it. it says, Aloha, Roger Wakefield and Sean Strong. Long time no see. Brother, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Uh, man, how's business going? How is Hawaii? And are, are, are you able to hire any good plumbers over there? We're trying to teach people about leveling up their skill set to becoming an even better plumber. And we've got the safe open. We're drinking Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. That's a mouthful. So is this. Uh, good stuff. How have you been doing, sir? I hope you're doing fantastic. Been busy, had medical issues, but back on your feet. Man, good for you. It is so good to see you in here. I love it. So where is everybody located? I, I, I'm not, I know we put that in there. Where is everybody located? Because as we go to trade shows across the United States, it's nice yeah. to get out and meet other plumbers. We got to meet a ton of people out in LA. Um, I've been I've been to Vegas, LA, Chicago. No, not Chicago. Vegas, LA, Indianapolis, Nashville, Nashville, and one more. And I don't remember where it was. Uh, working to the bone says Oregon here. Uh, a year two plumber just finished my last year one test. Good for you. So y'all call it a year one, year two. In Texas, it's a tradesman, journeyman, and master. Uh, tradesman, you've got to have two years or 4,000 hours. Journeyman, you've got to have four years or 8,000 hours. Or if you got your training through a DOL training program, you've got to put in, not go through a Department of Labor training program. You've got to put in, I think it's four more years to get your master's. So it's about nine, eight years. Pretty interesting. Dash Marines, the southwest corner of Maine. Good deal. So, so you're right up there near Massachusetts and all that. Uh, you know, I haven't been up there lately, but last summer I went up to Bar Harbor, Maine. And actually, it was, I don't know, maybe it wasn't even a full summer ago. Uh, I went up to the Acadia National Park, went glamping up there. And I got to tell you, it was freaking phenomenal. Flew into Bar Harbor, actually flew into uh, Boston, and then flew from Boston up to Bar Harbor. Man, it's one of the coolest things I've ever done. Stayed in a tent for two days, three days, three days, two nights. Dude, y'all are sitting on some beautiful country up there. Uncle J76 says, Prescott, Arizona, journeyman plumber. Congratulations to you. Good to have you in here. Uh, Randy, tell them who you are, where you're from, where you grew up. Randy's a pipe fitter, so y'all don't hold it completely against him. Uh, and then Mike Grimaldi from Buffalo, New York. So talk to everybody. I'm going to go check on a fire real quick. So I was born and raised here in Dallas, Texas. Uh, got in the union a little over 20 years ago. Went through as a pipe fitter. Uh, you know, pipe fitters are the best thing. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> you can't say stuff like that on my show. But that's mainly because I like fire. Uh, so it drew me in. I like to weld. 
don't prefer to weld overfit, that's for sure. Uh, I enjoy building high-rise buildings. That's one of my favorites, building a mechanical room. It's like putting in a piece of artwork whenever you're done. And that's one of my favorite things about the trades is building things with your hands. Pretty neat. All right, do we need to season these fajitas any? You might want to. All right, let's go ahead and start pulling them out. The fire is getting close to ready. Uh, spice them up just a little bit. I got my jalapeno salt, got my ghost pepper, and this is our cream of guacamole. Oh, uh, the store was out. That ain't fajitas. Uh, yeah, it's got to be. No. I, I told him beef. I think, yeah. I, th I think I got jacked over today. All right. We're supposed to have fajitas, and I've been craving fajitas. I, Cinco de Mayo yesterday. All right. I'll take this out in just a second. That's more says, by the way, nice review of the Tech College in Allen. I'm going to show it to my young son. I tell you what, that was fun to go to. None of this is fajitas. It's my day. Okay, wait. I forgot the fajitas at wait, home. How do we get tomahawk ribeyes instead of fajitas? Well, the store, you know, they were oh, out. I told even, them beef. Don't even. And I told them I like steak. Don't so that here's even. What they got. All right, so... I don't think that I can trust sending Randy to get meat anymore. Sport maybe, type. maybe not. So why why do we do this instead of fajitas? Mistake guy. Yeah, which you're, you're the mistake guy. He just come from cows too, but man, that's why. Uh, what, what we got there? Like ten pounds of meat? A little over six. Man. Well, welcome to Texas, y'all. Uh, Colton, I, I guess we're not having fajitas today, just so you know. Uh, Roger, I'm gonna start my plumbing apprenticeship on Monday. Just bought the UPC Plumbing Code Study Guide 2001. So excited and eager to work. Good for you. I love that. So the 2001 study guide is already out for UPC. If so, we need to upgrade. Just kind of communicating with Randy, let him yep. know what all is going on. So when I marinate fajitas or steak, I've, I've got this ghost pepper rub I love. Delicious. It's spicy. And since we're doing steak, I'd pull out one of those but also maybe i've got the hardcore carnivore uh seasoning oh, over yeah. there uh i'm gonna put some jalapeno salt on this a little bit now we're trying to work out a sponsorship deal with some grill people like smoker people uh all kinds of different things all right so that looks pretty good when do we get here? The black beef seasoning. Mmm, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I figured when the steaks came out, you'd come out. All right, so we've got ghost pepper seasoning, jalapeno salt, and hardcore carnivore black. Not too shabby. Now, I'm not your normal steak cook. A lot of steak people just think all you put on a steak is salt and pepper. Don't get me wrong. I like that in a restaurant. But when I'm cooking, I want to flavor my meat. And I mean, I, I've been cooking for you for years. Oh, yeah. Am I a good cook? Wonderful. I, I, Wonderful. I love cooking. But I love cooking because I love eating. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me see. Working to the bones is we have four years of apprenticeship, and then we test out for journeyman. 
we don't have a master plumber certificate. Working to the bone, that's that's pretty interesting. So when you're a journeyman, can you open your own company or do you have to have like a general contractor certificate or something like that? Mm -mm -mm. I can't believe we're not doing fajitas, but you know what? I also, I'm not going to complain about it. I'm just saying. I mean, I could, but what would be the point? Uh, so here's my ghost pepper. And as y'all see, I, I put it on a little heavy. It's like a rub. So I, I'm going to put it in. And that's one thing I didn't do on the, the other one. It is norm Normally, I kind of go ahead and, and press it in, rub it in. Because yeah. uh, I, I really like it in there. And I'm not going to put my hand on the meat. I'm going to use a different here. I'll just do it this way. Yeah. Thank you, Squirt. Mm -hmm. So sprinkle just a little bit of salt on there. Probably a little more than I need, but this is jalapeno salt. So we get kind of excited about it. I like that. And then we're going to go to the black. I like that one too. Go just a little heavy on it. Not enough. I don't, don't want to turn it completely black or anything. Close enough. So now I'm going to come in and press all this in really, really well. All right. Now, this may take a little bit longer to cook today than I thought because I was thinking fajitas. But... I think my fire's probably closed. I'm going to go shut my grill real quick. Uh, never understood what a pipe fitter does. Uncle J76, I like that. Okay, man, can you explain that one while I go get the grill ready? I can. So, plumber and a pipe fitter, they're both they're pretty similar jobs. We install pipe. Where a pipe fitter differs is we install weld pipe more than anything. And build out mechanical rooms from top to bottom, install steam, condensate, heating water, chilled water, put cooling towers on top of buildings, run that piping, condensers, all sorts of things in that world, but it's mainly the weld and weld pipe covers majority of it. We also do some refrigeration lines and things like that in our world. Uh, but it's mainly big, heavy pipe is my favorite part of what pipe fitting is. Pretty cool stuff. And me, when I got in the union, I became a superintendent on big projects. Uh, 10 to $50 million projects would fall under kind of my scope of work. And a lot of those, you know, you talk about you installed cooling towers. We took a chiller plant out of a basement of a church and moved it up to a roof. Mm -hmm. So cooling towers, uh, chillers, and all kinds of neat stuff. It was really a lot of fun. Uh, Dash Morton says, I was a Navy Marine pipe fitter right out of high school, journeyman four years later. I like that. Good stuff. What was your funnest job as a pipe fitter? Probably hospitals, I would think. And the reason they're the funnest isn't just for the fun side of the fact, but you're putting in the steam and the con steam and steam condensate lines that they're using to sanitize their scalpels and all the tools that they need to do surgeries and stuff. So I feel like it's one of the neatest. A lot of our stuff, it's for heating and cooling for comforts. Uh, but whenever we get into our steam systems and stuff, that's just a really neat world. Then yeah. working down the street not too far, putting in piping across the sky bridge is just one of the funnest, fun jobs you can have. Uh, where they built, it was a, I think it was 96 foot long sky bridge, and they hung the whole thing in one piece. Where was this at? Down here in Richardson at State Farm, the three towers that they built. So one of the coolest jobs I ever got to do was an indoor water park. 
Now, I started it and ran it, but you came in and finished up all the mechanical rooms. Yes. Pretty interesting. Amazing. To know that you can build a whole mechanical room out of PVC and only have one stainless fitting in the whole system. And the only reason we had the stainless fitting was we were trying to build a manifold to come off of, if that's the one you're talking about. No, the transition, because it was such a short from the wall to the pumps that the transition to reduce it down to the pump size. Which mechanical was room stainless. were you in with? Main. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we built a spool piece too in the other one, which was to for manifold off for all the outdoor stuff. And we were trying to figure out how to get this big manifold down to a shorter area. And because we had all these lines coming out going to different slides mm -hmm. and whatnot, and we needed metering valves on each one to control the flow. And me as a plumber, yep, came up with this idea, wait, what if we built this stainless steel and we could draw suck these T's out and not even put a T in, but cut a T in. Mm -hmm. And that way we can come straight out of it. So I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Uncle J76 is my first union job was a new patient tower at Henry Mayo Hospital. I love that. And my company had plumbers, sheet metal, pipe fitters on the same job. So see, Uncle J76, I'm the same way. We both work. Mm -hmm. uh, we've both worked for the, some of the largest mechanical contractors here in Dallas. And the neat thing about it is plumbers, electricians, HVAC techs, uh, pipe fitters, welders, all the above. And it's, it's neat because as a superintendent on that job, man, it makes coordination so much easier because, you know, the, the sheet metal guys, the electricians, the, the plumbers and pipe fitters, they all work with you. And it makes it nice because you can help coordinate things so much better. You know, you talked in the podcast about how it is. It's great working with other tradespeople. It's even better when they all work for you. That's right. When they're on your job, you're the superintendent. It's like, hey, I need y'all here. I need y'all here. I need y'all here. And you can orchestrate things and make it happen and make it flow so fast. And one really good thing about that. Man, it makes your company look good because you control the flow of the job. Uncle J76, Control Air was the name. I like that. Uh, Derek Crumley says, I'm late, but made it in. Uh, been a while. How is the mustache? The mustache is fantastic. <laughs> Actually trimmed it up a little bit just this morning. You know, it's funny. I get up every Saturday morning, cut my hair, trim my mustache, and I am good to go. So very nice. David J says, would you consider doing public speaking at a banquet with our apprenticeship program? David, I, I do public speaking. Uh, it really depends on where it is, when it is. I normally say no to everything off the get-go. But, I mean, I've got, you know, people, I don't just go to conferences. People pay me to go to conferences to speak, to interview people. Uh, we're looking at live streaming from conferences next year for several different conferences. It could be good. So, you know, sometimes we do. It's just, it depends on where it is. I had a company wanted me to come speak in Anchorage, Alaska. And they just, it, with what it cost me to get there, they're like, we can't afford this. And I said, look, I, I completely understand. I just can't do it. So, yeah, you can definitely connect with me on LinkedIn, reach out. I, I do stuff like this all the time. Just got to find a way to make it work and fit in my schedule. And, and and see if we can afford to make it happen. So, Rich Micaiah, how are you, sir? Good to see you in here. Ten years for Master Plumber. You know, that is such a good thing because I, and I really, I don't even remember what year I got my Master Plumber's license. I guess I can go look at it. But I started out as a journeyman. The only reason I got is I, I walked into my best friend's company one day and his three brothers worked with him or had and one of the brothers was there one day and he looked at me when I walked in and said, little brother, you got your master license yet? And I'm like, no. He says, well, all of us have, all of us have, why hadn't you? And I thought, wow, I don't know. So I already had my journeyman and my med gas license. So I went back and got my masters. And then I got my master med gas, my master WSPS, my master uh, water supply protection specialist. 
And that's why WSPS. My multi-purpose residential fire protection sprinkler specialist. It's a hard oh, one to yeah. say. <laughs> uh, and then my RMP. So I'm one of about 20 plumbers in Texas that has every master endorsement to go with their master license. So it's actually pretty cool. But I love what I do. I, I, I get to do the coolest stuff on earth. Steve Arlois says, I worked for a plumbing HVAC company in Detroit 17 years ago. And because I'm such a perfectionist, they always had me do the manifolds on the boilers. Perfect sweat joints go a long way. And, you know, we, we talked about that in the podcast. Uh, those of y'all that don't know, up at the top of the comments, man, we started a new podcast, a whole new YouTube channel. You can listen to it anywhere you find your podcast. But go check out the YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Ring the bell. Uh, we're going to be putting out a new one. We're trying for every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're one ahead right now. So so we're doing good. The great thing, I don't know if Lord Dilly is still in here, but got a message from Sean the other day. Lord Dilly jumped in the Discord, left a comment, and says, oh, my gosh, this is phenomenal. So we love what we do. Let me run out and check my meat so we don't burn anything. Randy, tell, tell them about the worst job you've ever worked on. Worst job I've ever worked on, man, that's tough. I mean, well, I've worked for some tough bosses. Let's put it that way. Uh, there's times I had a guy that he's, long for. he's the super stickler. Uh, worked on his job for a while. They started... Mandatory Saturdays. My first Saturday happened to get a call from my mother, so I went ahead and answered it to make sure everything was good. So I get a write up for being on my phone during work time, stuff like that, you know, which you're going to have some of those guys out there. You just got to do what you can, get through it, work for them, do the best you've got. Uh, not too long later, he got rid of me and fired me for excessive use of cell phone, excessive tardiness and being late, which I was never late officially. I did miss the bus that everybody rode over to the job site one day, which I just walked the whole way to the job site and got there on time and everything. But since I missed the bus, he called me excessive tardiness. The school kind of laughed at it whenever I got down there with everything. And they're like, yeah, no, we know who you work for. We're going to send you right back out to work. Don't even worry about it. I'm glad that you lasted as long as you did. Keep going. I'll be right back. So it ended up working out in the long haul. That's probably one of the worst jobs I've dealt with, but that was mainly because of my boss. Have you ever dealt with a construction job? Just the job wasn't designed right, laid out right? Problems like that? Anything you had a hard time where you just, it's hard to fix it and do things right? Well, like, so I had a job one time where we were down as a styrofoam plant. We were adding room for 20 more machines on one trench, 10 on another. Well, they sent down their engineers after we were almost done with the job because the way they had figured everything, it was completely impossible to do the job. So they spent three days in my trenches trying to figure out how this job was even done. So at the end of the third day, they finally came to me and go, oh, so the last six feet of both of these trenches is level. There's no fall. So you need to get your guy back out here and put some slope on these. Well, our building engineer, he came out finally, and he's like, hey, what all them guys tell you? So I told him, you know, I said, I'll, I'll get the concrete guys out here. Let me get them to put some grout down there or something. He goes, no, 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 no. They, did, they thought this job was impossible to do, and you came in here and you did the job, and it's installed right. They just had to find something to justify their three days being down here. I love that. That's, you know, and... Everybody's got to justify <laughs> why they have a job, so it, it's crazy. Uh, working in the bones says, my company has plumbing, electro, HVAC. Nice when we all work together because we truly work together and work around each other. 
you know, and that's exactly what I was talking about a while ago. Me being a superintendent for a big contractor that has multiple infinities like that, it was great because you coordinate everybody, you make things happen, and the job runs so much better. So it, it is, it is a wonderful thing. David J says, have you heard of TMP Mechanical in the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana uh, free app program with wonderful pay, free apprentice program? No, I, I haven't. Uh, TMP Mechanical, uh, I've not heard about it. There's a lot of companies down here that are members of either the union or PHCC. That's normally where you get the most training. Uh, some good residential service companies though, believe in training their people. So th that can be done too. So I'm going to take them out here with me. I'm going to flip the stuff. Uh, ready, if you want to grab this pan and go rinse it out yep, and, and get this ready here. Uh, so, of course, we were supposed to do fajitas today. Somebody BS'd me. Somebody lied to me is what they did. Uh, I just want to turn these over. God, these look good. Uh, I wish I could close, dampen my fire some which we really can't do on this grill uh i'm trying to go medium rare without burning them and i'm trying to close off all the air that i can to, to dampen my fire and i'm not having a lot of luck i really need a better grill uh i may have to get that soon and I probably would not have done the tenderloin or done these bone-in ribeyes, uh, these tomahawk ribeyes, until I had a really good grill. But of course, Randy messed that up. Uh, good. That kind of got the fire dampened out just a little bit. So I'm gonna set this down right here. But you know, if you want to be a great tradesman, and, and this is kind of what we we're talking about today, how do you level up your skill? How do you do better? And the the cool thing about it is. You can learn to do new things. You can learn to do things that other people in your company aren't learning. And by investing in yourself, investing in your training, investing in your knowledge, you can move up and be a better person. When I got in the union and got my med gas license, that was the first thing that I learned where somebody offered me more money. Then I started learning construction management, leadership, communications, personalities. I started learning things to help me really do good. John Strong says, somebody was thinking with their own stomach and shopping with dad's cart. Boy, you nailed that one right on the head. I had. Oh, well. I've, I've apparently, man, whenever I got out there with those seasonings, I apparently got some like ghost pepper seasoning in my eye. Uh, Mom Slayer says, how long did it take you to get your P1 license? Uh, I almost hate to say this. I got my plumbing license in about two years. Uh, back when I got my license, you could work for a company and the master plumber just signed off when he thought you were good to take your test. And it was probably two years. At the time, it should have been three years. And, and you know, I probably wasn't far off on my hours because we worked a ton of overtime. No problem. They had been grilling me and, and teaching me and mentoring me. So when it was time for me to learn, then I, I was learning. And when it was time for me to go take my test, I was prepared. I used to work with, with master plumbers and journeyman plumbers that, that knew I was getting ready. And they would ask me plumbing questions every day. Now, we didn't have the study books back then, or at least I didn't know if they were available. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have all that. We just had plumbers that wanted to make sure you learned things the right way. And when it asked you questions, they're like, well, how do you know? It's like, because I said so. And that was the only answer you got. There wasn't no way to go check it and double check it. So I, I, it took me about a year and a half to two years to get my first license. It took a while after that to get my med gas and then, and then my master's. But it was because I, I really hadn't planned on doing either one of those. I didn't get, I, I got my license, I think, in 83, my journeyman license. Uh, it was 83 because it was the year you were born. I uh, got my journeyman license in 83. Didn't get my master license till God, probably 99. 
but I, I wasn't even trying, wasn't worried about it. Sean says, can't say I blame him though. Those are good looking steaks. Yeah, they, they are. Uh, matter of fact, speaking of good looking steaks, I'm gonna walk out here and look at them one more time. Uh, probably flip them again, see what they're ready for. Yeah. But, you know, if you want to be a great tradesman, and, and Randy and I have really been talking about this all morning long, you've got to figure out what you can learn to set you apart from everybody else. I don't know if y'all can see those or not, but man, those puppies don't look bad at all. Give us just a few more minutes and I'll be ready to pull them. And if y'all can sit here and watch us eat for about 10, 15 <laughs> minutes. Uh, you know, learning and growing. And I think that's why we started, I started looking at my career. And I want to remind y'all about the Trade Talks app uh, or the Trade Talks podcast. Jump over there, check it out. It is something that we've started doing. And it's not just plumbers, it's, it's all kinds of trades people. Pipe fitters. Uh, I've had plumbers, I've had electricians, have water treatment people. So this is going to be something that's going to help y'all learn and grow and make more money. Building the app is something we wanted to do to teach people because when I got into the union and started learning other things, I started learning. The more I invest in me, the more I learn and grow, the more money I make. Mm -hmm. I love making money for other people. I was helping them grow their businesses, and these are companies that I loved working for, at least some of them. Maybe not the last one, but the rest of them I did. And learning and investing in me, my mindset, my knowledge, changed everything. So pretty cool stuff. Working in the bone says, have you seen mechanically inclined fish tank, toilet tank? I have not. I'm going to have to check that out because I like mechanically inclined. <clears throat> have you seen their fish tank toilet? Uh, it's probably the one that Brandy sent me. My oldest sent me a little video. It's, yep, complete fish tank with an operational toilet inside of it. Very interesting. Gonna have to check that out. Uh, looks so good, it almost makes you forget about the fajitas. You, you know, Sean, I had forgot about the fajitas to you, but why didn't you get fajitas? I mean, I was craving fajitas <coughs> later. I'm, I'm just later. saying, yeah, I, and that's right, because I've got all fajitas at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sean. Thanks a lot. All right, what else? We got anything good in here? Has everybody told us where they're from? I know Steve Harlow, jalapeno salt, ghost pepper seasoning. I'm telling you what, I don't, I don't know if y'all can see these seasonings here or not. And, and the jalapeno salt is made by Spiceology, just so you know. Yes. <clears throat> Good stuff. I know. It is amazing. All right. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Steve Arloa is a new member. And guys, membership is good. We're, we're, we're getting ready. We're doing some cool stuff. Number one, like I said, we've got a new podcast. There's the scroll across the bottom, the link up at the top of the comments. We are building an app. How exciting is this? Why well, go flip and meet one more time? How exciting is the app? The app's going to be so cool. So cool. So much. Uh, we're cooking steaks. So much access to so many things to expand your knowledge to learn new things for you and your business it's all going to be located on this app it's it's going to be a one-stop shop for everybody it smells good i know that my eyeballs are a little smoky mm -hmm. Smelling real good. Mm, it does smell good, doesn't it? <laughs> I'll give it just a couple more minutes and we'll take out the, the tray here, or I will. I don't know if I want you around my steaks. It just ain't even right. It's going to be the best fajitas you've ever had. <laughs> Sorry, Squirt, didn't mean to get you hit. <laughs> I know, and I'll tell you what, and I, and I do love ribeye fajitas. Man, I, Frankie's used to do those. Ribeye yeah. tacos. Uh, did Frankie's do the ribeye fajitas? Somebody else did. 
Casa Milagro. Right down the street, go. Casa Milagro. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. My favorite. And Sean, it the hit is definitely worth it. Today. I, I know. I didn't I'll hit it hard enough, more, Sean. Yeah, fine. I know. I know. <laughs> Uh, I, I know. <laughs> uh, so here's the deal, guys. Look, if, if you want to grow in the trades, and it's so cool having Randy here because we've, we've talked about this all morning now. If you want to grow, literally invest in yourself. And I talk all the time about new tools, new material, new technique, new technology. What tools don't you have that if you had, you could do your job better? You could do your job maybe completely different because maybe you could do a whole new job. Uh, that's why I started when I started my company. I wanted to learn leak detection, slab leak detection better than anybody. And, you know, we had Gary the water guy on a few weeks ago, whole house water filtration. You know, Jimmy Dale, having him in, and, and they're, both of them are on the podcast. Having Jimmy Dillon talk about how he wanted to grow when he started with his dad, they were doing 300 grand a year. He's looking at doing 100 million this year. That's 20 years. It's not a bad growth plan. But he learned to do new things. He learned tankless water heaters, whole house water filtration system. There were so many things he did and he learned that grew that were phenomenal. Learning to grow is what makes a difference. So I'm going to grow my belly today because I'm going to walk out here and pull these big old ribeyes off. And I don't know why anybody would get the freaking biggest ribeyes in the world, but they look beautiful. Now, they all three fit in the pan whenever I took them off and pulled them out. I think they got even bigger being out here. But I gotta tell you, all I can say, Sean, is brother, you are missing out. Uh Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Not too shabby. There ain't no room for sides. You don't need a side. Colton, I'm, I know that there's another one out here for a reason. Uh, just put a tortilla under your steak. Yeah! Yeah! Now, I need to look at them because I didn't want to burn them. Man, I tell you what. Oh, you want a fork and knife too? Did I forget to get you one? Drawer likes me. Mm. Man. Okay, so I love my steak medium rare. And I think I did a pretty daggum good job. I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but that looks nice and pink and warm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Best feeding you've ever had? I ain't complaining. Not at all. Mm. Mom Slayer. What's the best top corporation in your opinion? We're an LLC for, for tax reasons. And I want to say my CPA says, start your business as an LLC and register as an S Corp. I don't know why, <clears throat> but I listen to my tax people. You know, when you start a company and you hire bookkeepers and CPAs and accountants and coaches and consultants and everything that you'll hire. Listen to what they tell you to do. But there's a reason behind it. They know what they're doing. They've done it before. They, they, this is their special. Yours is plumbing. 
listen to what they tell you to do. There, there's a big reason behind it. Are y'all Longhorn fans? Absolutely. Are you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Guaranteed. For life. Yep. Yes, we are. If you were here earlier and saw me in the studio, there's a Longhorn helmet right above my shoulder. Yes, I'm a diehard Longhorn fan. Mm. How long did you live down there? I lived in Austin from 86 to 89. Yeah. Loved it. Sean, you should be here. These are the most tender fajitas I've ever had. Right off the bone. Mm -hmm. When you make it, Sean, I'll, I'll get fajitas for us. Huh. Yeah, Sean, we, we need to get you down here on a Saturday. That means you got to fly in on a Friday. Be here on a Saturday. It's pretty good stuff. If any of y'all would like to see Sean in here, put yes in the comment. And Sean, if, if you're the only yes, it really doesn't even count. <laughs> I'm just going to say. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Man, we, we've gone through all the comments. We might as well stop and eat. I like that. I like that. Get that new one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Save our love. You're the only other one that really don't count. <laughs> Sean says, love to be there, brother. I look forward to having some of Randy's fajitas. Mm hmm. The liquor, nobody I else wants you here. I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh, I need to go get in the chat real quick. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Guys, I just want to show you. Now, and remember, y'all saw that. We're cooking on a 55-gallon a barrel that's been cut open. Oh, now you come out. Yeah, he wants look to at see him. the meat. Look at him. Uh-huh. He wants them to see it. So... There's, man, that, that's a good looking piece of ribeye right there. Bone in, medium rare, juicy all over the plate. Mm -hmm. Can't complain at all. How y'all like that? Colton's managing everything. If we hurry, we can eat his steak too. Just saying. I think I'll be nice today. Hmm. I do have a couple baseball games to go to. Say, so when did that start? <laughs> Pat. Mm. Pat, I gotta tell you, we were supposed to have fajitas today, and I have been really looking forward to it. Last year, yesterday was Cinco de Mayo. I went out yesterday. What did I have yesterday? I did the carne asada. I did two margaritas. I did queso and guacamole. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> Ate a little too much. Had a little belly, margarita belly, color fat. And man, when I went home, I was miserable. But I was looking forward to fajitas today. Welcome to Steak Day Mayo. And I was told, yeah, Steak Day Mayo ain't even, don't even. Uh-uh. No, I was looking forward to fajitas. I was coming in for fajitas. I already had my taste buds set for fajitas. But I got to tell you, the, the ribeyes, when Randy, yeah, I'll just tell you, um, I asked Randy yesterday, said, hey, can I, I'd like to interview you. Is that good? He said, yeah. And a little later we talked, and, and he says, so what do you want to eat? I said, fajitas. He's like, okay. 
And we had decided we weren't going to do any really good steaks on the barrel. We were going to wait till we had a great sponsor. Do you remember that conversation? Uh, the way my brain works, some things it excludes. I just don't know. Glad I got my boots on. It's getting deep. But you're right. Cat, this is really, really good. Mm -hmm. Colton did a cameo. Colton better be nice because I got his steak right here. I love my hardcore carnivore pork. Yeah, Roger said, I want steak, but he does, Randy, stop listening at steak. Sean, you're not helping him out, I'm just telling you. I, I mean, love the kid to death, but that gummit. Yeah, he's happy, he don't care. Mm. Man. Sean Stiles says, we don't have steaks or fajitas in the Discord, but we still have a great time. Lots of fun and knowledge shared, and we'd love for you to join us. Right there is the link, guys. Guys, the Discord group, the subreddit group, there's some mm -hmm. great things going on over there. There really are. Colton, if you want any of this steak, brother, I recommend you heading this direction between myself, Randy, the flies that are starting to come in. There may not be any left in a little bit. Or do you? That might be worth steak here going for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this might be one of the better. Th this is definitely the best meal we've done. Mm -hmm. It is. This is one of the better steaks I've done in a long time. Taking you back to your roots. Mm hmm. Barrel grill. Mm hmm. Anybody in here, what kind of grill do y'all cook on? Rick in the Bone says, would be amazing to do a whole pig in a pit with the whole crew and fans. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, <clears throat> Rick in the Bone, we're in the middle of buying 10 acres outside of town. And trust me, there's room to invite anybody who wants to come. We are thinking about how can we do a bash, mm -hmm. a party, an event. Rednecks and plumbers. How did rednecks slip in there? Hi. Yeah, I resemble that remark. Uh, yeah, trades people. You know, anybody wants to come up, we're, we're looking at what can we do and how can we make it. Definitely be a place for some good times. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Mm. I think we've gone over our, our allotted time. TNL, hold on just one second. Mm. I hate to talk with my mouth full, but this is good. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. TL says, hi, everyone. How are you doing? Good to see you in here, sir. <clears throat> Jump back up. Sean Strong says, glad you got your steak squirt. Uh, Roger, sorry you didn't get your fajitas, but I'm sure there's a great place you could get some. Thanks for the show, gentlemen. Thank you for being here. Special thanks to Sean, Randy, Colton, everybody who helps me do what I do. 
But thanks to all y'all, we are wanting to do something really cool. Once we get this land acquired, get enough stuff built to where we can do the things that we want to do, man, we're going to invite everybody. And I want y'all to come down, have fun, enjoy it, see what we get to do. We're going to make it a party and have fun, do a lot of interviews. And, man, we'll do a whole bunch of stuff out there. We're eventually going to move this entire shop out there, the marketing company out there, the training center for League Pro, the manufacturing center for League Pro. Everything we do will be out there. We got some good stuff planned. So I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for being here today. How do you take your trade skills to the next level? Do you learn new knowledge? Do you get new tools, equipment, technology? What is it? What do you need to set you apart from everybody else in your area? If you're an employee, a plumber, how do you set yourself apart from every other plumber? Randy talks in the podcast about, look, I wanted to be the very best. I wanted to always outperform everybody else. I did the same thing when I first got in the union. How can you be the very best? You've got to learn the things you need to do, and then you got to do them. So thank you all so much for being here. I do appreciate it. I'm Roger Wakefield, lead AP, helping tradesmen make more money. Here we go.